Okay, so with the glorified 148 GTL board, which is a General Sherman radio, but it's basically a glorified uh, 148 GTL board. And uh, in this video, I've had a lot of emails and phone calls questioning about, is that a limiter? Because they said we didn't think it was, and now we're confused. So okay, well, let me go back and look. So they sent me the link. I didn't expect it to be this jackass in the video, but apparently it is. Which I'm not surprised, but anyways, um, it's just one more of those chop shops that do these videos, which is good because it educates people to stay away from these guys. He only has like maybe eight, ten people, maybe a dozen that he deals with constantly. He can't get nobody else because people have seen all the screw ups. Um, anyways, so he can bash me all he wants. I don't care. This video is going to demonstrate the lack of education this guy really has. So anyway, let's listen into what he's got to say right here. Here. And now, what I wanted to talk and point out, okay, is the fact that we got ourselves some old school bullshit here. R113 has been clipped. Okay, if you don't know, we can't see it. Let me get my handy dandy poker. It's right here. Right there. There's your clipped modulation resistor. Clipped modulation resistor. That is not a modulation resistor to give you more drive modulation like TR24 or TR25 or resistor 131, okay? Which again would be back down in here, okay? Not there. This is all part of your AF switch. This is all part of receiver circuit, your audio frequency uh, switching combination in here. That's got nothing to do with your modulation control. <clears throat> and I want to point one more thing out, too. He always says that this frequency counter is spot on. His output's spot on. No, it's not. It's still off. So, and he says it doesn't matter. Well, then you better go back and read the book. Or learn how to read in general, because, yeah, it does matter. I did a video on that, so we're not going to sit here and go over it again. This is just, you know, you're going to beat a dead horse. This guy's just a freaking idiot. Uh, but, so, in the answer to your question, for all the emails I had, I had several. And the text messages, phone calls... He even had some on Facebook Messenger. And uh, out of out of all the people have, who have uh, contacted me, six of them sent me this damn link that goes right to this jackass. And uh, so I say that because he's, he's just one of these guys that likes to run his mouth. <clears throat> Spends more time glorifying his opening preamble to his videos of some black ops bullshit that... He thinks he's military. I'm still waiting to see your uh, your Delta Delta 214. Where, where is that DD 214? <clears throat> so, anyways, we've already proven points over that too because I got a lot of family, law enforcement, and military, and uh, yeah, really funny that this guy claims to be all of that and says he's been how many tours overseas. He's so full of shit. Uh, that that's actually a disgrace. It's very disrespectful because my family's been in military forever. And uh, law enforcement forever. And let me tell you what. They would never, ever come out and say something they are not. And I would never claim something I am not. So for someone to sit there and say, oh, yeah, I was in the service. Hey, you're so full of shit. You have no idea how many people I've got in the service that heard you say that. I played the video over and again. That, that little clip I saved and played over and again for a lot of the military guys to, to hear. And they just sat here laughing their asses off. And they said, well, here's how you figure that. Uh, asking for the Delta Delta 214. <coughs> so, where's your Delta Delta 214, your DD 214 form that you still haven't produced? So, so anyways, when I saw this link and where it went to this little douchebag here, I thought, oh, great, this is wonderful. Oh, man, I got to do another video on this jackass to show everybody one more mistake of his garbage. It's like, great, here we go. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to point out. So, no, this is not your modulation limiter. No, 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 no. So, now you guys can rest assured of that. How do I know? Well, it's real simple. Let's take a look at this. Just happen to have the schematic right in front of me. So, right here is your mic input. Okay? Right here is your AMC, your modulation control amp. Okay? There's two transistors in here. You can pull either of the two. Usually, typically, it's a TR24. Let me, let, let me say this first. You should never pull limiters, ever. Okay? You don't need to. But... Um, if you have to, or if you want to, rather, I should say, for whatever reason, 
you'd pull this transistor here, but if you did that, it shuts this whole path. It bypassed that whole path. So now you got your ALC, your sideband, and your AMC, your AM, full bore modulation, which means all your AMC controls, like right here, is your ALC control. That would be disabled. And then your AMC control, that, uh, that would be disabled. Okay, so um, you don't want to touch these transistors. If you feel the need, for whatever reason, 131 controls strictly and only AM modulation. So if you were to clip that, or in most cases, unsolder one lead and lift it, this will open up your modulation just for AM. It will not affect your sideband. The reason why I say, well, again, you should never clip anything. I can't say that enough. Um, but if you clip the ALC circuit and you pull this out, which opens up both, your ALC becomes warbly after a while, and it ruins the sideband side of your audio, okay? But if you feel the need to do so, then it would be R131, okay? R131 is your 10K resistor. That would be just for your AM modulation only. Now, here's your audio chip, okay? It's not hard to read schematics, guys. Looks like a bunch of squiggly lines to everybody, but it's, you know, I'm trying to break it down as simplified as I can. Anyways, here's your audio pass-through, right? Now, here's your balance modulator. Now, that is R113. You clip this resistor, the supply of voltage cannot get to switch your AF. This transistor won't switch, which means that AF switch is not going to switch. Which now, let me follow this line back down. Do, 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 do. Where's it go, guys? So that disrupts your balance modulator, which means you're not going to have shit at all. So it does not open your modulation. It screws up the balance modulator. It can't switch it. It can't switch your AF switch back and forth. So no, that is not a limiter. This is your limiter. And then back here would be a limiter that's also known to be taken out of many radios, which I usually put at least 98% of the radios I see with limiters pulled out. It's usually this one. The other 2% might be the resistor. Uh, or, um, if it's not those two, it's usually because someone takes the potentiometer on the board and they take and they disable that and they put a fixed resistor in place instead of a variable resistor. So, but 99 or 98% of the time, it's usually this guy being pulled. We put that right back in to fix the problem and it cleans everything all up nice and pretty. Now, I also state that when you are aligning a radio or tuning a radio, don't always trust an oscilloscope. It can look very beautiful on a scope. You got to have a spectrum analyzer at all times in front of you, not some pocket poodle you want to pull out when you want to, and you paid a lousy what two eighty nine or something three hundred dollars for the damn thing. You know, it's not about the cost. It's about the fact you got to have it hooked up at all times. Period, because the spectrum analyzer shows you a lot more detail than what a scope can show you. So it's really important you must have that uh, option. you got to have it open. Um, so it's very important. Uh, let, me, stop, so. let me stop that. Let me go back to here. Let me go back to uh, here. Got to love commercials. Hey everybody, it's Bobby Flay, and I'm here with my friend... Okay, so, hey all right, here is where you're going to see, when you get all done with the alignment and all that good stuff, you see the spectrum analyzer, and I see my scope. I want to see what's happening here, but I also want to see what's happening there. I don't want to just trust this, because, yeah, it shows excellent waveform. It's like, wow, that's pretty good, but... When I look over here, I say, wait a minute, sometimes I'll see something different. I'll say, eh, I don't like that. And your your scope can only just pick up so much, whereas the spectrum analyzer picks up a lot more. So it's very important to show this at all, all, all times when you're tuning your radio. Because you got to make sure that these two coherent together. They must balance each other, okay? They have to. Every block is a division, okay? So this is one block and one block. One plus one is two. That is 
So that's me describing and explaining once again because there's another person who seems to think down in Savannah, Georgia, that I guess one block is a half a division, and that's not the case. So, anyways, I'm just describing that in this video here momentarily. But let me speed this it's up. A horrified term because he, when he told me, I'm like, okay, okay, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Just want to get these all cleaned up and tied and nice there you go. He's watching my little troll and can't count, so that's four division. Every block is one division. So if you have a block and you have a block, two blocks means two two division. Okay. That's four one, division. Two, three, Here's four. your modulation. Topic. Okay, okay. One, two, three, and four. And there's four, your three, wave four. farm. Okay. So it's important to see what's happening here, and it's important to see what's happening over here as well. If you do not have this on all the time, then you really don't know, which means. You could be sending a lot of dirty radios out with dirty signals. And that could be all due to the fact of limiters being pulled, such as down through here and or uh, down through here. Okay? Not your AF switch. Not your PA switch. You don't touch those because now the balance modulator will not function correctly and that will not switch on and off to function. You understand? So, no, that is not a limiter. Okay. okay, guys, anyways, I wanted to point that out so everyone have a great night. And uh, now you're aware of, yet again, of these uh, chop shops that are giving wrong information. So my shop is definitely fact, not fiction. These chop shops you got to watch out for because they're all fiction, no fact. Even though he says he's fact over opinion, he ain't got no facts. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So everyone have a great night, and I hope this video helped out quite a bit uh, for the people who want to understand this. And, and know that uh, there's different sections of the radios. Learn your sections and you understand exactly what's happening. Where one of the many people uh, described where that was located. Well, I said, well, where's that located? It doesn't sound like it's, like it's even inside the Mike Amps Arcade. And when they explained it to me, and I said, well, is it near any kind of can on the board? And they started giving me the can numbers and then the transistor numbers. I said, nope. I said, that sounds like an AF switch. It does not sound like It'd be anything to do with your AMC, per se. It's got more to do with the AF switch. And uh, as soon as I said that to them, I got thinking about this. And when I got home this afternoon, I went right to the schematic. Sure enough, that's an AF switch control. It is not an AMC limiter. Okay, guys, have a great night. Catch you later. DS Radio Shop, upstate New York. The number one shop to go to and the most honest to go to.